Hello again. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Please read along with me in the scriptures we will be looking at. Read along with me word for word, verse by verse of the scriptures we will be looking at. Read along with me because my mouth goes quicker than the brain sometimes. <laughs> and uh, be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Turn your authorized version of the scriptures to John chapter 9. John chapter 9. It's interesting, in the video I just done, we talked about vows and about how the enemy, that some of these enemies seem more vigilant and diligent than some of the saints. Disturbing. Now I want to address this thing of blindness. And we're not talking about an actual physical blindness. We're talking about one that is spiritual. John 9. Verses 39 on to verse 41. And Jesus said, For judgment I am come into this world, that they which see not might see, and that they which see might be made blind. Hmm. John 15. John 15. People bring up, oh, Jesus said, I'm not here to judge the world. He wasn't there to be judged yet as he will be during the kingdom of heaven. He was there offering the kingdom of heaven. Okay? But see, the very fact that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh was judgment in and of itself. Now you think about that. John 15, verses 19 on to verse 23. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. Verse 22. And right here, we look again in John 9, verse 39. And Jesus said, For judgment am I come into this world. Verse 22 in John 15. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me hateth my Father also, because Jesus Christ is God the Father. Okay. The very fact that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is a form of judgment. Why? How? Because as we talked about briefly in the previous video, um, Man is inept. Man cannot keep the perfect requirements of God. Only God can do that. Only God can do what he deemed perfect to keep. Only he could do it perfectly. Okay? And the fact that God was manifest in the flesh, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? That very fact alone is a sign, and a sign, of course, but is an act of judgment. Think about that. Think about that. Because he says here in verse 39 in John 9, For judgment I am come into this world, that they which see not might see. And it says here in John 15, verse 22, If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. Very interesting. And then you go to John chapter 3. John chapter 3. <laughs> you know, the, these poor people that say, well, John 3.16 is the gospel for today. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. No, it is not. Okay? No, it is not. And these people who go to John 3.16 exclusively, there is a place in your witness and testimony unto lost people for John 3.16. 
Not at the beginning, okay? No, no. But see, they don't like to read usually past 17. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to read verses 19, actually, on to verse 21. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world. And men loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that hateth, for everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. Very interesting. Okay? For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deed should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Mm. Interesting. Very interesting. John 16. John 16, verses 7 on to verse 13. Okay? The mere fact... That Jesus Christ is come in the flesh was judgment. Okay? Think about that. I'm not coming where he says I haven't come into the world for judgment. He wasn't there acting as judge. He was there as the lamb to die. That's what he meant by that. But see, his presence alone, what he spake unto people, it chafed them. You read about the Jesus in the scriptures. He was a in your face, put the finger on that one thing you lack every time. There, there ain't no dilly dally with the Lord. He gets right to the heart of the matter. Mm -hmm. John 16, verses 7 on verse 13. And here's a good verse for you to prove that Jesus is God the Father. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. The Lord says there that he'll send him unto you. But elsewhere he says the Father will send him unto you. Send him unto you. Oh, that's right, because Jesus is the Father. Okay? Very good verse to prove that Jesus is the Father, by the way. Let's continue. And when he is come, he's talking about the Holy Ghost, which is the Lord. The Lord is that spirit. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. Check that out. Read the whole chapter, okay? And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. You know who's afraid of judgment? Lost people. So judge me. <laughs> Nobody can judge me but the Lord. Oh. Ah, we're going to deal with that one on Wednesday. Lord willing. Okay. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father. And ye see me no more. Of judgment. Because the prince of this world is judged. And who is the prince of this world? That be Satan. Prince of the power of the air. Okay? I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it? And what are we reading to? Verse 21. What? Verse 21? No, verse 13. How be it when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will shew you things to come. Verse 14. He shall glorify me. For he shall receive of mine, and shall shew it unto you. See, the charismatics will have you to believe that the spirit that is in them is of the Lord, and yet they're giving extra scriptural revelation of things. 
okay? They veer away from the scripture. The spirit that is in you, if it line, does not line up with the scriptures, got a problem, okay? Because the spirit in you is not going to go contrary to his word, okay? But see, also too, you got to remember, rightly dividing the word of truth. Because a lot of people say, well, they, they did this in the Old Testament. Rightly dividing the word of truth. you got to rightly divide the word of truth, my friend. Okay? Being dispensational. God is not going to go contrary to his word. Okay? And if you think you're saved and the spirit in you is going contrary to this, dispensationally even, uh, you got a problem. You're probably not saved. Okay? All right? Go back to John chapter 9 again. Let's look at that verse again. Verse 39. And Jesus said, For judgment I am coming to this world, that they which see not might see, and they which see might be made blind. What's an example of not, uh, which, uh, what's an example of this? That they which see not might see. Well, let's look up a little. Verses 35 on to verse 38. Jesus heard that they had cast him out. The one guy who was born blind. Jesus healed him. What happens? They bring him to the council of the Sanhedrin or whatever. And they ask him twice, how did, he, how, how, how did you see you get your sight back? And the guy told him, Jesus did it. <laughs> okay? He did it. All right? They asked him again. They get his, his mother and father, his father and mother, excuse me, bring them in. It's like, okay, he was born blind. How did he do this? And the guy's like, I told you already and you didn't hear it. Wait, you're going to be his disciples now? They didn't like that. Why? Because they were the upper echelon. They were the elites. They had the proud look. They had everything, man. Mm -hmm. They claimed they could see. What happened? <laughs> Let's read 30, verse 34. They answered and said unto him, Thou wast altogether born in sins, and dost thou teach us? And they cast him out. Right there. They were the elite. They were the educated with $100,000 pieces of paper on their wall. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Jesus, had, Jesus heard that they had cast him out. And when he had found him, he said unto him, Dost thou believe on the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? I am, for judgment I am come into this world, that they which see not might see. He was born blind, and now he sees, he sees actually. Now, who is he, Lord? <laughs> Where he says that? Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? You get it? And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. And he said, Lord, I believe. And hey, Jeho. And he worshipped him. Well, it was the Jehovah reference. They say that Jesus didn't receive worship. They actually do. And their, their ridiculous New World Translation is... Ugh. So there's a good example of someone who didn't see. But he, number one, got physical sight. Number two, got actual sight. It's like, this is some God. This is the Mashiach. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Right there, God manifests in the flesh. Hmm? Okay? 40 and 41 now. And some of the Pharisees, tradition, tradition, <laughs> scripture, <laughs> okay? That's, that's a Pharisee. That's a Pharisee. And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words, and said unto him, Are we blind also? 
Now, you look at verse 40, and you compare verse 40 with verse 34. Okay? Look, look, come on, look at verse 40 again. And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind also? Hmm. Verse 34 again. They answered and said unto him, Thou wast altogether born in sins, and dost thou teach us? And they cast him out. What's the significance? That reeks of sarcasm. <laughs> hey, Jesus. <laughs> Come on, are we blind too? The fact that they even asked is telling. The fact that it even uh, left their lips is telling. It really is. It's not enough, but it is. It is telling. Because nowadays, I mean, the, the Pharisees of this age, this time, okay, which was still under the law, okay, these guys would look at what today, even in Israel, and would be like, Oy vey. Oy vey. In comparison, In comparison of what it's today, and scripture validates this, you know, the men of Sodom and Gomorrah will, you know, condemn this generation, okay? The people of long ago look at what's happening today, and the people of long ago that are in hell are like, Wow! That's bad! That's bad! Okay. Their question here was one of arrogance, of one of snottiness, if you will. <laughs> Come on, we're the Pharisees. We 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 have the scriptures. Oh, they did. They did. But see, again, the reading of scripture to them was a mechanical thing. Okay. A mechanical thing. It wasn't life-giving to them. Okay? So they asked him, it's like, well, well, we're the Pharisees. Of course, we, you know, what, we, we, are we blind? Jesus said unto them, If ye were blind, ye should have no sin. But now ye say, we see. Therefore, your sin now, there's no evidence that suggests that one of these Pharisees was actually physically blind. But obviously now, even devils can get this part. What kind of blindness is being addressed here? A spiritual blindness. Obviously. Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. Okay? Romans chapter 3, verses 19 and 20. Romans chapter 3, verses 19 and 20. Now, we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Why are we looking at this? What happened when you found out that something you were doing was actually sin in God's eyes? Hmm? It's like, well, I've been, I'm, whoa, that, oh, no. Okay? What happens when you receive truth? What do you do with it? Hmm? What do you do with it? What do you do with ice cold? Bitter truth. Because truth in and of itself must first be a bitterness before it can become sweet. Hmm? Especially in pertaining to things of Scripture. Because I must decrease and he must increase. You know what I'm saying? You saints, you know exactly what I'm saying. You lost people, you don't have a clue, do you? No, you don't, because it's all about you. Ignorance is not knowing better. Stupidity, which is willful ignorance, not wanting to know, 
is something else. Okay? Not wanting to know, causing a blindness. Turning a blind eye, ignorance is bliss. Okay? All right? By the law is the knowledge of sin. You search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so, you find out something that you're doing is not right according to God. What do you do? Hmm? Number one, it chafes you. It's like, oh, no. <laughs> right? Right? Number one, it chafes you. Number two, it rocks your world. It's like, I've been telling you, wow. Okay? You didn't see. But now you are made aware because you were shown truth. And now you do see. But see, every pun intended, there are those out there who think they know it all. Hence, they have their eyes open, ever learning, and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Just because someone can rattle off all this stuff does not mean that they have wisdom, which is the fear of the Lord. And wisdom, which is the fear of the Lord, leads on to understanding, departing from evil. And understanding leads on to a knowledge. And there is another knowledge out there, which is what? Earthly, sensual, devilish. That masquerades itself around as if it is from the Father. It is from God of this world, little G. Yeah. But not the Father. See. Okay. Well, we're in Romans. Romans chapter 7. Again, we covered Romans chapter 7 in the previous video. Verses 7 on to verse 9. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid, nay, I had not known sin, but by the law, for I had not known lust, except the law had said, thou shalt not covet. Covet. Hmm? There are people out there today that actually do not know that in the Ten Commandments it says, thou shalt not covet. Okay? And God abhorreth the covetous. Okay? This thing about coveting crosses every <laughs> dispensational line, okay? They, they, the Christians, well, we're to covet uh, uh, spiritual gifts. Yes, we are. But see, the spiritual gifts that we are given are not to be hoarded. They are to be given out unto others, okay? That's the thing, okay? The covetous that Satan gives is for me, 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 I, 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 okay? The gifts that our Lord gives unto us is meant to give unto others. Okay? So we are to covet the gifts of the Lord so we can share what the Lord gives us. Okay? That's how that works. Okay? So go away with your, you know, oh, is it we're supposed to covet? For the edification of the body of Christ, not for self-glorification. And see, Christianity has turned it into self-glorification by a gift. Hmm? You see this in them wicked charismatics all the time. Well, you know, speaking in tongues is not for everybody. Just like these charismatic idiots who said, well, I've seen the Lord. You haven't seen the Lord. Oh, so I'm not special enough to see the Lord and you have? Oh, you must be someone special. <laughs> see how that works? See how that works? It's a self-glorification. Even though a lot of them, especially with these twits, is like, well, I've been to heaven. I've seen God. No, you haven't. No, you haven't. Some of them, I used to know an a, a individual who claimed to have seen it. Woo-hoo! Okay? <laughs> but um, they keep a, an aura, if you will. Give me a better word. Uh, countenance. Thank you. Uh, they have a countenance of them, I guess, of, you know, uh, humility. But touch on their little pet doctrine. It's like, oh, hey there, Jack. Um, you claiming you saw the Lord, huh? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I don't, I, I don't think so. No, no, pal, you haven't seen the Lord. You haven't seen, <laughs> you've seen something. Okay? This is one thing, too, about these charismatics, by the way. 
Um, I don't doubt with some of these charismatics, I don't doubt that they haven't seen something. I don't doubt that. Some of them, yeah, I do, obviously. But, you know, when you got these people who talk about where they've seen this light, and no marvel, Satan himself has transformed into an angel of light. Okay? I don't doubt that some of these people have not, haven't seen something. But what I can tell you is, they have not seen the Lord. They haven't. You know what they do, though? They'll, they'll, they'll try to bring something out of the Old Testament and make it applicable today to defend their heresy. Not rightly dividing the word of truth. <laughs> it happens all the time. Rightly dividing the word of truth is so imperative, by the way. Getting off on a rabbit trail there, excuse me. But the whole point is, of why I'm kind of, kind of going off on that, okay? I had not known sin, verse 7 again, but by the law. I was ignorant. Or you could say, I didn't see. I couldn't see. But you saw, but you didn't see that it was sin. Okay? But sin, taking occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence, or concupiscence, for without the law, sin was dead. You didn't know that it was sin. So you just go on doing it. You find out that it's sin. What do you do? What do you do? Well, the woman you gave me to be with, she gave me the dream. I did eat. That's what a majority of people do. It's like, I don't, I don't believe in sin. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck. You will at the Great White Throne of Judgment there, buddy. Yeah, you definitely will. Uh-huh. What do you do when you are made aware of truth? What do you do? What do you do? I'm asking you. What do you do? That's why there's this bizarre thing of preference for a Bible. This is the scriptures. Get a Bible that suits you. You are your own God then. Because it's what suits you. This is God's word. The authorized version. My preference has nothing to do with it. This is his word. This is what he has preserved. This is perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration. Okay? This is his word. This is what he has preserved. My preference is irrelevant. It's irrelevant. But see... Find a Bible that softens it for you. Find a Bible where you can get away with things. Why do you think there's so many of those Bibles out there, friend? Why? Huh? And then again, I got to mention this, this guy again. I got to find this guy. This Muslim individual who just absolutely obliterates Christians. I mean, he shreds them with a Bible. With a Bible. I mean, he does. Uh, he just annihilates these Christians. And he, he looks at the camera. I, I've mentioned this guy before. i got to find him. If any of you can help me find this Muslim guy, I, I, I'd like to talk to this guy. Not debate, because I don't debate. But I, I'd like to talk to this guy. I would. I, I'd like to talk to him. I'd like to talk to him. Because he's decimated. He just decimates them. Okay? He just decimates them. But see, he's basing it off of a Bible. And see, the Bibles are slighted to remove what God has said. Okay? So, an example. You go from, like, say, the Y, the NIV, to the authorized version. It's like oh, day and night. It's, I mean, it's like, you know? It's like, whoa, <laughs> whoa. If you're reading like that, 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 that message, man, as is above, so below, quoting Aleister Crowley or whatever his name was, yeah, yeah in the message, yeah, <laughs> there's no comparison. What do you do with the truth when it's revealed to you? What do you do with it? What happens 
when the Lord gives you eyes to see. What happens? What do you do when you see? What, and what do you see? We kind of touched on that a little bit in the previous video. Okay? But sin taking occasion by the commandment wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. For without the law, sin was dead. I didn't know it was sin. Now I know it's sin. Oy vey. Or, ah, whatever. What do you do with it? Where are we? Oh, to verse 9. For I was alive without the law once. Hey, hey, nothing can touch me. I'm a walking razor blade. Everything falls off of me because I'm a walking razor blade. Wait. Oh, you did? Oh, what I'm doing is sin? Uh-oh. Or, ah, never mind. I don't believe that stuff. I'm a walking razor blade, man. I'm, I, nothing touches me. I can't lose. I'm a winner. I'm a winner all the time. For I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived, and I died. Oh, man. Oh. That's why people don't like the scriptures. That's why if someone wants to read something, they'll go to a Bible. Because the Bible doesn't tell them the truth. Okay? The Bible doesn't tell them the truth. You can get a Bible. You can get that grotesque message, and you can get, you can justify sodomy, uh, female preachers, which they can do in pretty much any Bible, almost almost any Bible. But I mean, still, I mean, you you can find. See, your preference can find something that softens the truth for you, so you can get away with devilment, keeping you blind. But yet. Yet, well, I go to the oldest and best, the, the originals. Oh, here we go again. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now, I understand, yes, there is a difference between ignorance and blindness. I understand that. But if you can figure out that they are, at least in a way, intrinsically linked, you might have to reconsider some things, friend. Well, we're in Romans, Romans 8. And we're looking at these things of the law because it's a good example. A lot of these people, especially the Christians, they don't even take a Bible. They don't even take a Bible with them to their phallus houses. They don't. And you stand there as the same with the scriptures? <laughs> it's a... Uh, it's sad. It's sad. I met that one guy who was like claiming to be saved for over 41 years. Almost as old as I am. Okay? Never heard of rightly dividing the word of truth. He looked at me like I just fart in his general direction. Okay? He, he, didn't, he didn't have a clue. Okay? He thought, he thinks that the Christians are going through the great tribulation that you got to tithe. Okay, <laughs> that the, the birth, that the New Testament began with the birth of Jesus. Not even that guy, I'm not even going to say that guy's name. <laughs> I want to stay away from a twit like that. Okay, <laughs> but I mean, 41 years? You've been saved 41 years and you don't even know this? Dear friend! Um, <laughs> you, you, you might want to do some real deep soul searching. Okay? Because when you bring to them the scriptures, especially, especially the Christians, man, you, you're, you're going to get a little bit more out of an atheist than you will a Christian. Because the Christian, you know, it's like dealing with a Catholic, some of the most difficult people on earth to deal with. Okay? <laughs> I must admit, um, the black Hebrew Israelite people, I have had hardly any... There are hardly any, I don't want to use this word, but give me a better one, success with witnessing onto the black Hebrew Israelites. Very, very little. 
that that's a that's a whole different kind of atmosphere there. That that really is okay. But um, as saints, you know, better you'll find that you get a little bit more in a conversation when speaking about truth unto an atheist than say a Christian. It's like you know, you know having some track with the one with the Romans wrote on it, and she and she's like, no. Ah, oh, see, you go to St. Thomas's in Crystal Lake, huh? You know what? Oh, uh, yeah, 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 because it's in Romans Road, yeah. Not the Rose Deer Jesuit Priest! Yeah. Yeah. But uh, Romans 8, chapter, uh, chapter 8, verses 3 and 4. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son... In the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemn sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Okay? All right? Jesus said unto them, If ye were blind, ye should have no sin. You didn't know. Okay? You didn't know. I didn't know. That's why we looked at the things the reference on the law. It's like, I, but, but sin take, uh, taking occasion by the commandment wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. For without the law, sin was dead. Verse 9 in Romans chapter 7, excuse me. For I was alive without the law once, but, one, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. If you were blind, you should have no sin. Blind guy in John 9. Blind physically. But he was also blind spiritually until the Lord, until he saw the Lord. Okay? Pharisees, who also physically saw the Lord, they were blind. And they were stuck up too. Because they were their own gods. Touch on that in a second. But we go to Galatians. I said it that way purposely. Galatians chapter 3, verses 19 unto verse 25. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions, that the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now, a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Not three persons that make one God. That is ludicrous madness. Okay? Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law, for if there had been a law given which could have given life, Verily, righteousness should have been by the law. And in Romans, I believe it's chapter 9, where it says they stumbled at that stumbling stone because they wanted to keep the law, okay? After the Lord had fulfilled the law, okay? All right? Because he's the only one who could keep it. All right? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. And the law was ordained unto life in the fact that it was God's perfect requirements, talking about the Ten Commandments, but the problem is man couldn't do it at his best. The only man who could is Jesus Christ, who's God the Father. Okay? Okay? But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith, which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. First, let's read verse 25. But after that faith has come, 
We're no longer under a schoolmaster. What does that mean? We're not under the law. Lost people, you're under the law. You are under the law. The law is not binding salvifically, but see, the law is there to show you God's perfect requirements, and you can't keep them. And most people don't even care about that anyway nowadays. But see, you're under the law. We have been rescued from the judgment of the law. We're under judgment to Christ, and we will give an account to, uh, to him at the judgment seat of Christ. We are under the law to Christ, especially within the Pauline epistles for us today in this dispensation. Absolutely. But see, you, you lost people? The, the law, you're under the law. Okay? You can't keep it. All right? And see, when a saint comes to you and shows you the truth of Scripture, see, you're not going to be blind anymore. And therein, what do you do? Because number one, you're no longer ignorant. Now you know. You were given a moment to see. Now what are you going to do with that? Are you going to, like, tell me more. Or are you going to be stupid and be willfully ignorant? I don't want to hear anymore. Get away. I don't want to hear it. I don't want you to rate. I've had that said to me before. I don't want, but I'm not going to use the superlatives that they used. I'm not going to let you pee on my parade. I've had that said to me almost word for word. It's not funny, but it's like, you have no idea, dude. <laughs> you have no idea. None. Jesus, back in John 9, verse 41, Jesus said unto them, If ye were blind, ye should have no sin. Okay? If you didn't know. And see, God will not leave you without a witness. Okay? God will not leave you without a witness. There isn't anyone in hell who's going, who could say, You never told me truth. Not one. Not one. There ain't no innocent person in hell. You know what? You want to know the interesting contrast to that is? There's a whole lot of guilty people up in heaven. Let that run around in your, your brain case for a little while. But we're justified by who? Jesus Christ. Hence, he is our peace. See how that works? Jesus said unto them, If ye were blind, ye should have no sin. But now ye say, we see, therefore your sin remaineth. And this thing about seeing, oh, some of you saints, you already know where we're going. Who promised who? Something about sight. Genesis 3. Yeah, buddy. That's right, brother. Genesis 3, verses 4 and 5. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, disobey what the Lord said, in the dispensation that was all works. Ah. Uh, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, disobey what God said. Then your eyes shall be opened. You'll be able to see. And ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. The Pharisees, they could see. But yet they didn't see the Father right in front of them. It's like, you know, the, the beggar, you know, the, the, the rich young man goes to Jesus and like, Good master, what good thing must I do to be saved? You know, what, you know, what, you know, what, what do I got to do? And the Lord's like, why callest thou me good? There's none good but God. What was Jesus saying there? What was he saying? The rich young ruler didn't have eyes to see that he was talking to the Father. The Messiah, the Messiah, okay? He didn't. He just saw a meal ticket. But the blind beggar, okay, the blind beggar after that, 
said, Jesus, thou son of David, attributing unto the Lord that thing of kingship. Okay? Jesus stopped. Like, oh. The Hebrew addressed me as son of David. Hmm. It's often, way too often, that the beggar, the downtrodden, are the ones more likely to seek the Lord. And we've talked about this before. Um, prosperity, as it is named in the world today, is a very slippery slope, a very dangerous trap. It really is. It's good to be able to pay your bills. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, praise the Lord. But there's a, there's a responsibility that comes with that. There is. And the more you have, the more harder it is for you to be Christ-dependent. What do you do with truth? What do you do with it? Most people, well, that's not my truth. Oh boy, here we go. <laughs> but see, if you've already made that choice, you've already made a choice, haven't you? Okay. It's not up to us, saints, to take this and beat them over the head into submission. No, I spare you, okay? Our job, as it were, here. Can I, can I tell you about Jesus? Hmm? Can I tell you some things? The Lord opens up a door. And, and remember, when you got a chance to witness to someone and you're, you have the scriptures, have the scriptures on you, and but even if they get... That I've, I've encountered this, these, some, you know, get to, yeah, shut up, you know, get, get as close as you can, so when you're reading the scriptures with them in public, they're like right here, so they can see what you're seeing, do that, brother, if you get a chance, do it, I know, I know, the, the, you know, it's like, D dude, get away, I, I want you to see, I'm not going to just hand it to you, well, why won't you do that? I mean, I don't want uh, someone to take the scriptures and whip them. You know, who knows? <laughs> I've got some people pretty angry at me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, sometimes it's been because of my attitude. Absolutely. Absolutely. But a majority of the time, you just be what the Lord wants to use you as. <laughs> That and it'll take care of itself. Okay, but remember, when you get as close, get so they're they're right here or whatever side. It's like it's like here. Okay, you see this, and you read with them. You show them. Use your little digit, and you show them what you are reading to them. Okay, do that. It works. Okay, it works because when they you know they look at that. It's like, I never knew that I said that. It's like, I, I know you didn't. <laughs> I know you didn't. Okay. You know why? Because it's all about you. It's all about you. You're the God of your own little universe. And when you get truth, what do you do with it? What are you going to do with it, man? That's going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching this if you do. And to all you brethren who have prayed, thank you. I didn't address this in the previous video because I, I, I'm thinking about doing a third, but uh, might have to wait for Wednesday, do two on Wednesday. Wednesday, Lord willing, going to do a video addressing that no one can judge me but the Lord thing. The previous week was a bad week. It was a bad week. Health-wise. It was a very bad week. 
Very bad. Very bad. And, um, yeah. Wasn't the worst. Wasn't the worst, but, um, you know, like I, I woke up at night uh, gasping for breath on a couple of times. But, uh, yeah, it was, last week was really bad. That's why there was not a video at all for over a week, just so some of you know. But um, anyway, I got two videos to upload. Thank you for watching this if you do. Thank you for your prayers. Please pray for one another. We love you, and we'll see you in the next video.